Right then, today we are in a TD5 Discovery 2. Now what we're doing today will make no difference whether it's a TD5 or a V8. It's basically just for the Discovery 2. And what we're doing is going to put a 300 TDI mechanism for the differential lock so that we can engage the sense differential. So the easiest way to see if your car does have a diff lock is look at the lever really. I mean if it's in the central position like this and it won't go left and right I mean the left and the right is how you operate the diff lock so if it's only in the central position like this and it won't go left and right then it doesn't have a diff lock. Now not all Discovery 2's come with a diff lock even on the transfer case. The earlier ones up to about 2000 and I think they stopped it around 2000 and they came back around 2002. Even on the transfer case it will not have a differential lock so you need to get underneath and check it. I have checked this car, it is a 99, it does have the diff lock on it. I've engaged it, it does work, we've checked it all. So we have a 300 TDI uh, mechanism and we're going to fit that today and hopefully have a diff lock. So let's see what happens. So to take the sense console out, because this is what we need to remove to actually get down into the where the gearbox is and the differential, uh, we need to take off this part here, the gate, uh, all the shift around here, and the switch panel, and you go inside. There's a couple of screws in there that you take out. Um, let's get it apart and have a look. So to get it out, you've got a couple of screws at the front there, you've got a couple of screws to take this panel off here and a couple of screws at the back. These are quite easy to take off, you literally pull the automatic shifter, you just pull it out, it'll come off. Um, with the transfer box, you just you can see it's threaded, so you just unscrew it, you just pull the cover up and unscrew it. Uh, it's quite simple really. And uh, that's how you get it off really, so let's get it out and uh, I'll come back to you. So once you've got the centre console off, as you can see, what you'll be greeted with is a giant mess of hair and dust and just rubbish really. 20 odd years worth of accumulated rubbish. Um, you do have to disconnect the handbrake here, just so you can get it up high enough. It has a little pin that you pull out and it's basically straightforward. I'm pretty sure most people know how to take the centre consoles out. Um, but yeah, uh, you do have to disconnect your handbrake. Um, as for all the wires, they basically sort of live in the same, when you take it out, everything sort of stays in the same place, so it's pretty easy to work out. And you know, with the sake of light, switches for your, for your windows, if you put it back together and the switches aren't operating right, just, just put it back, I mean, you can label it, but it just, they just seem to sit in the same place. I don't really bother with that. Um, so yeah, so now we need to take this bit off here um, and, and see what else we've got to dig into. This is the part we're going to be fitting today. This is the transfer mechanism off a 300 TDI Discovery Automatic. Uh, it's essentially the same as what's on the TD5 apart from you don't get this part here which is what will operate the sense differential. All this is, is very similar. I believe on the TD5 it's cable operated, but it's going into the same transfer case. So this is what we're putting on today. Um, let's get back to it and start taking it apart. So once you've got the panel out and you've drilled out the rivets for the little plate here, you will have your selector for your high-low range. I mean, I've got the gear selector there for the automatic drive. I've just put it out of the way for now because you can disconnect it but I've tried doing it on this one it's a bit stiff and I don't want to force it I don't want to break it um, so you'll get a look inside if you have a look down here I'm just trying to get the camera to focus on that there you go it's the, I think it's there come on there we go so what you can see right in front of you now that is the selector for your diff lock um, and then down here, there, out of the way. you can just see it there, there is the selector for the high-low range, so this is what's coming out basically. It, it is cable operated and as far as I can tell you can just take it out, so let's take it out. Right, so this is what holds the cable in for the high-low selector, basically you just pop it off the cable and pull it out like that. Uh, it's relatively straightforward. 
So on the high low selector cable, there's a 24 mil nut here. If you just back it off on the back, you should then be able to loosen it off on the front. So if you just loosen the nut off on the front like this, it's coming. It says it's coming. Right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to get the shaft in for the diff lock. Now, down there on the bottom, if it'll focus, you see it there, that is an M8 nut. I've used a nylock nut just to give you half a chance. Um, and you just want to tighten that up. And then, once we've done that, you see it? the diff then. Hang on, so if I loosen that off. There you go, it's locked again. There you go, it's locked. So at least we know at least we know it works. So once you've got your selector shaft on here for the diff lock, you then need to attach this part which is your high and low selector. So down here you can see I've got an M6 bolt uh, there you go. Right, so down here there's an M6 bolt. I've sort of, you see there, I've closed the gap slightly on this because for some reason they're slightly different. But as you can see, it goes on there now. If you use a slightly longer bolt, you'll, uh, you won't have to close the gap, but that's all I've got. So I have to close the gap on there just to get, just to see some thread. So all we need to do that is get a washer and a nut on the end of there and then we're ready to put the selector in. Okay, so once you've got your actual selector mounted, there's four bolts here, there's two long ones, two short ones. Now obviously this has never had this fitted before, so these four holes that go into the gearbox have never had a nut in them, so, uh, a bolt even. So, they are quite stiff, so I'm just showing you now what I'm having to do, so, what I'm doing is having to tighten them up. See. Right, it's starting to stiffen up there. So <laughs> I'm loosening it again. Loosening it again. Basically just get in spray on it. A little bit of spray. A little bit of lubrication on it. Dropping it back in. And basically just doing this in and out now. So They just need working a bit because obviously they've never seen a, a bolt in 20 odd years, so they're not going to go straight in. So, yeah. You don't want to force it because the last thing you want to do is snap a bolt. <clears throat> Of 
Du har jag bolt. And that's pretty much it. Once you've got those four bolts in and your selector, your high and low selector is there on there, that's all molted up. Um, it's not the best job, but it's tight at least. Um, same with that one. I did actually have the original piece that goes through there, but it sort of fell down there somewhere. And as ever, these things fall down and they never come out the other side, so that's gone forever. So I've just, uh, I've just sort of made my own there with a, a nut and a bolt. So yeah, that's all in. And that's basically it. You should be able to see if you just have a look down there and focus. There it is. There's your, come on focus. There we go. There's your centre diff lock there. If you go like that. There we go. So, yep, yeah, there you can see it's moving now. So it goes like that. Or lock it there. Unlock it there. That's it. And you see you've got your high and low selector there. So once you're happy with everything, uh, obviously I'll give this a bit of a clean because it was a bit dirty. Um, you need to get your plate that we took off before so that's what I've had to do to make it fit obviously you've got to make the hole bigger because it only had the little the little small hole because obviously all it did is go forwards and backwards because it goes left to right I have over it a bit but it's about right there um, now looking at this this plate doesn't go back in the way it went it came out because it was mounted from underneath you can't mount it from underneath because this part here, I don't know if you can see it there, it's, it sits proud of the body. So to actually get to get this plate underneath there, it, it's just not going to fit. So what you can do is if you just grab it like that, you can actually just mount it. In. There you go. There you go. So you can just mount it on top like that. See all the screws there. The, the holes there, all lining up for the rivets. Well, that's it mounted there now. Um, all the holes for the the rivets. All we need to do is I need to take this back off to get the selector through for the gearbox. Um, and then we're pretty much there really, that's all there is to it. So that's it all back together, I uh, got the sound deadening back on, made that hole a little bit bigger just obviously because the, uh, the selector goes across. Got these vents all back in here, give it a bit of a clean, handbrake's ready to go, obviously it has to go in this upright position to accommodate the hole that it comes through. Um, I reconnected this after after taking it out because I thought it's just safer to have it the handbrake on, especially when you start messing with the gear selector because it's it's quite easy to knock it out of part because there's no lock on this cable. I mean, you just pull the cable and uh, it'll just go through part reverse neutral drive. Um, so if you haven't got the handbrake on and you knock it out of park, then you could start rolling forwards. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's it basically. This is this is done now. Right, that's it, everything's back together now. Um, I've put the old shifter on it for now. I've, I have ordered a 300 TDI shifter, but it's not here yet. So I've just put the old one back on it for now. But as you can see, it's, it now moves across. So basically, we start it up now. Really engaged it. There you go, that's it. There's your diff lock. Pull it back. That's it, that's all there is to it. 
Right, that's that's basically all there is to it. Um, I, I do want to talk about why I've done this and go into a bit more depth with it. Um, you know, traction control is really good on the Discovery 2. You know, when it's working, you haven't got the three Amigos. It works really well. You know, you watch the videos of, of when these things came out and they will work on one wheel drive, basically. They will pull you out of the mud with one wheel and this is why Land Rover did away with the center diff lock on these cars so when you put the center diff lock in when you actually select it the traction control disables especially on the earlier ones at least on the pre facelift and the reason being is if you lock the diff and the traction control is still operating what will happen is if, if you are basically got one wheel with traction and the traction control locks an entire axle, then something's going to give. You've got the centre diff locked together with the front and the rear axle. And if the traction control decides that, say, the rear axle, there's no grip and it'll lock both the wheels, you know, something, it's fighting against itself. So this is why Land Rover on the early ones, they disable the traction control when you operate the center diff lock. Now, what you can do is on the later ones, let me just have a look at this part number. So the part number on this SRD 000150, and what it is, is it's an updated slabs unit and it, allow, it will allow the traction control to stay on when the diff is locked. Now, I can only presume that that's because they won't lock an axle together because, like I say, if you lock an axle together with the sense diff lock um, locked, then you're going to end up, it's going to start fighting and something's going to give somewhere along the lines. So I've seen on the internet, people are saying you can cut a cable, uh, you, can, you can reactivate your traction control on the earlier ones. Don't do that. If you do that, something is going to break. They're not designed to, you know, Land Rover didn't do away with the diff lock for no reason. You know, the, the traction control is very good. And, you know, you've got to remember the centre diff lock, they, they, they were there, you know, before times we had computers in cars. You know, this is what we had. You had a Land Rover, you had a series Land Rover, and it had four levers sticking out of the floor, you know. And you had your diff lock and you had your bloody, you know, your high-low range and your overdrive if you, if you know, if, if you had a posh one. And and this is the thing, you know, the, the, diff, the centre diff lock is, is an old-fashioned design. And it was there to, to compensate having open diffs on the axles because, you know, the whole, unless you've got locking diffs on your axles, you know, you're going to start, you're going to come stuck at some point and everything's, you know, if you're down to like two wheel drive, I mean, think about it. When your diffs are open, you're basically one wheel drive at any point. You could lose traction on three, you could lose traction on three wheels two wheels on, on an axle one either axle and that's it you're not going anywhere so this is this is what people need to realize when they start talking about chopping these cables for the old slabs unit the ones pre the, the facelift which people are doing now if you chop that cable and the traction control doesn't deactivate and you've locked the center diff something is going to give because it's going to start fighting the center diff with whatever axle it decides it wants to lock um this is why they disabled it in the first place. So yeah, like I said, the thing is, is if you're gonna put a center diff lock on it, fine. If do it, you know. If you're gonna leave the traction control as it is, you know that that's great. That's that's how it's intended to be. That's how what Land Rover did. Um, but if you want to try and utilize the traction control with the diff lock, don't cut the cable. Get the later unit. You know they're so cheap on eBay. I will say this so I've got a V8 and a TD5 and this one's off a TD5 it doesn't work in the V8 unless you get one off a V8 or you start coding it which you know I've got a Hawkeye it doesn't allow you to do it um, I, I'm not even I don't even think test book can do it um, it can be done I've seen I've, I've read people can update the VIN numbers on these slabs units um, I can't do it so if you can get one um, if you've got a V8, try and get one. Well, you're going to need to get one off a V8 or get it coded. Uh, or a TD5, you know, just basically it, it's to do with the throttle position sensor. 
um, and, and that's all there is to it. You know, I'll I'll do another video of how to change these slabs units. It's dead easy. You just open your glove box, take the BCU out, and there's two nuts, and it just comes out. It's dead easy. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to reiterate. You know, the diff lock. It's all well and good, but the moment people start cutting these cables and and you know not disabling the traction control when they've got that diff locked, it's it's just not a good idea. Um, and, and that's all I wanted to say really. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. It, you know, I, this is the first one I've ever done, so you know, um, I hope it's been of some use to some people. The ones I've seen on the internet, they're all to do with manuals, so it's at least you know, there's one here. After mine's an auto, so you know, that at least now you, you can see what's involved, uh, and that's it really. So yeah, cheers.